The original vision for the RPG game I'm working on was a co-op building and wave defense game. During the day, you and a small group of friends would harvest resources. Resources would allow you to purchase buildings and upgrades to improve your town. At night, waves of monsters would attack and your team would need to defend. Fast forward to now, and sadly, very little of that original vision is in the game right now. Obviously, the direction of the game has changed, but I still really like the original idea and think we could incorporate some things from it. So let's bring them closer together and add farming to the game. Except I can't just start with farming, because at least in this case, you can't really have farming without some aspect of building. You at least need to be able to place seeds. And while months ago I teased how I started the implementation of the building system, it currently only supports the placement of cubes. So obviously that needs some work, but as it is, here's how it's set up. When placing, a ghost object is created which represents the thing being placed. We snap the location to a three-dimensional grid using some fancy math and run some checks. If the conditions aren't met, the object is orange, otherwise it's blue. Daba di daba die. This first pass worked pretty good for some test cubes, so I started using it with some other sizes. Rectangular test cubes made me realize I needed to add the ability to rotate objects. I shared a clip of that in a private discord with some YouTube members and noticed a little glitch that made it look like the object lifted off the ground when it was being rotated. I kind of liked how it looked, so it became a feature. I was feeling pretty good, so I decided to implement an actual object that will be in the game, but ran into a pretty big problem. But first, a word from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Over the past week, I've been playing Raid straight up clowning on people. I literally won my first ever tournament and it wasn't even close. Each day I get closer to level 40, which is when the vertical prison Doom Tower is unlocked. It's 120 floors filled with some of the toughest challenges and bosses the game has to offer. It also comes with some of the best loot. To have any chance at getting that loot, you need a super strong team. Luckily, there's currently an event where you can unlock a powerful Ronda Rousey inspired champion by logging in for seven days between now and February 20th. In celebration of the event, you can use the code RAIDRONDA to immediately add a pile of loot to your inbox. And if you're completely new to Raid, you can get started by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on your screen, which will give you the champion Virgis along with other treasures to help you get started. And again, thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for supporting this channel and the development of Mana Valley. When we left off, I had run into a pretty big issue with the building system when I tried to implement fences. Cubes were great, but most things won't fill an entire grid space. What do you do when that happens? My first thought was to just push everything to an edge. With that approach in place, I tried to make a fenced in area and realized it wouldn't work. The fence isn't symmetrical, so rotating it to make a corner moves the outside look to the inside. This isn't a huge deal for a fence, but it does does become a big problem with key elements like walls. Making all of the pieces symmetrical on all three axes would resolve this, but I think it would look better if the pieces were unique. The universe must also agree because the same day I decided this, I saw a guy out in public wearing a unique is better than perfect t-shirt. I promptly ordered myself one and I've got to say, I think it looks pretty good on me. Although regrettably, my first thought after deciding not to go the easy route was to make separate items for inside and out, which made me realize that there's really no clear way to communicate which is which. Everything would have to be labeled inside or outside, and I'd have tons of items to manage. Not a great solution. I ended up deciding on centering the model. That allows the player to decide what is inside and outside with a single piece just by rotating. The only issue now is that you can't make a nice corner from just straight pieces. In other games that employ a similar system, corners auto-complete. That's not too much of a problem for us to implement, but what is a problem is that the inside Outside, outside issue from before is back when we get to corners. If the fences are all the same way, you can determine which way a corner should face. But if they aren't, then what? Maybe at that point it doesn't matter since the person placing them clearly doesn't care. Yeah, we're all looking at you, Jared. And for intersections of three or more of the same type, what happens? How do you determine it then? 
And for something like a wall, there will be a gap that gets created between neighboring objects like the floor. Surely that autocompletes too, right? I was starting to get overwhelmed. I felt like I had opened Pandora's box when I was supposed to be working on farming. So I closed the lid on all my problems and left this for future Aya. This has at least worked out once before, so I'm sure it's fine. He loves the challenge. The test objects I had previously created gave me a great head start for making buildable planters. Things only started to get a little messy when I got to the seeds. The overall shape of the planter adheres to the grid, but it has dirt inside it that doesn't. This means that in order to have the seed float in the air, it needs to actually be able to go into the volume of the planter. In a game like Minecraft, the 3D grid is pretty strictly adhered to. Seeds go on top of blocks. There are some exceptions that can cause some weird behavior, but for the most part, it works in that context. I don't think I could pull off the same thing in my RPG. To fix this, I added an option so that some items can be anywhere vertically. They just check if they're allowed to be placed on the surface below and then cozy up to it. But each time I make an exception like this, I get worried that it's going to bite me later. So make sure to subscribe to find out if it does. By this point, testing items was getting really frustrating. Every time I wanted to try out a new item, I had to manually add it to the player's bag. This also added the item to the bags of players in other safe slots. As long as I always remembered to remove it, that wouldn't be a problem but you and I both know that at some point I'd forget. Alternatively, I could add items to a shop or chest, but it's slow to have to loot one of those every time I wanna test something out. This issue has literally come up for every item I've put into the game, so it's worth finding a more permanent fix. I decided to take some time to implement a console and added a command to give myself items based on their ID. I also added a command to save the game so that any items I added would stay in my inventory as I repeatedly tested. This might not seem like a big thing, but it's made development so much more enjoyable. It really helps speed up the testing process without forcing me to break things that I've already done. It also gives me a way to work around bugs unrelated to what I'm currently doing. Like I broke this teleport shrine, so when I used it, I'd just fall out of the world and have to restart the game. Now there's a stuck command I can enter to just teleport to a safe location. There are also now commands to enable a flying camera and freeze time. I'd love to be able to say there's a technical use for that, but really it just allows me to get cool shots for these devlogs and the Steam page, which is honestly in desperate need of updating. Anyway, now that I had the ability to get seeds, I planted my first one and nothing happened. At some point, you just expect things to know what they're supposed to do, don't you think? I guess until then, I need to implement the ability for plants to grow on my own. I decided each plant would have four stages, seed, germination, budding, harvest, and decay. <laughs> Wait, actually that's five. Oops. The time that each plant would be at each one of those stages would be unique to each one. They would also have different watering requirements, but I'll get to that later in the video. Compared to the building stuff, getting this to work was pretty easy, and I even added a little polish with animations and particle effects to make things feel a little more lively. I did also change the way placing worked a little. Before, it used the direction of the player model, but there are moments where that kind of felt finicky. Now, it just uses the center of the camera. The only thing I needed to do was to tie all of this into the save and load system, which also needed a fair amount more work. I won't bore you with the details of that other than to say that saving and loading work for all three character slots now. And I'm really glad I took time to figure out the save and load system in my tiny game pixel labs before fully adding it to Mana Valley. Then it was time to do a stress test using tons of planters and plants. And after about 5,000 planters, it starts to chug along pretty slow. But what's happening right now is that every 10 seconds, all of the plants get checked to see if they should be in the next stage of planthooddom. 
but I really only need to check that if the player is close enough to the plant for it to matter. So I move the plant functionality to a game object that only displays when the player is nearby. That was a huge improvement and I'm glad I checked it before I implemented all of the plants. <laughs> I went back and tested to see how many I could make now. I got to an absurdly large amount of planters, probably somewhere around 69 million, and then Unity crashed. When I reopened the project, my scene was completely empty. But it turns out it was just a new scene and everything was actually fine. At this point, I know what you're thinking. Aya, it's been 10 minutes into this video and everything you've talked about has nothing to do with witches or magic. But on the contrary, young Padawan, the plan is that players will be able to use the crops gained from farming as ingredients in alchemy. And a part of the lore is that every living thing has mana so harvesting will also give the player mana and you can imagine in a place called mana valley mana is a pretty important resource but nevertheless there is also something we haven't addressed in the current state you can place items but then they're there forever lingering over your shoulder like the heavy breathing kid in hey arnold we need to implement a way for the player to deconstruct the things they place in the world. And what better way to do that than with a spell? So I spent a little bit of time creating a new spell. I'm currently calling it the destroy spell, but it could really use a better name. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. It's pretty simple and will be available to the player early in the game. I think the coolest thing about it right now is the effect I added to items being destroyed. Oh, and on destroy, the item is added back to the player's inventory. Once all of that was finished, I moved on to plant hydration. It's pretty simple. The player just needs to water the plant within a certain period of time. And in case you don't know me very well, I'm keeping all of the plant specific info in a spreadsheet because I have a theory that a telltale sign of a good game is when you start to make spreadsheets. Look at those cells! Anyway, after a third of the hydration period has passed, a little water drop shows up. At two thirds, the water drop turns orange and starts to bounce around. Please water me. Later in the game, you'll be able to learn a rain shower spell to water entire areas of plants. But early on, you'll have to do things the old fashioned way with a watering can. The watering can can be filled at a body of water or from a well. When the player uses it, a little water effect displays and a super soothing water sound plays. I could literally listen to it for hours. I eventually want to try using 3D water droplets for the particle effect and add some splashes, but for now, this is fine. There's some more stuff I've been working on, but I think it'll have to wait for another devlog. The next video I'm working on is adding your suggestions to the game, so make sure to leave yours in the comments. Until then, if you want more Mana Valley content, you can click here to see where this project started.